Ever wondered how traits pass from one generation to the next, shaping our physical appearances and capabilities? Well, the answer lies in the fascinating world of genetics. This is the study of inheritance, the process by which characteristics are passed down from parents to offspring. It's like a biological game of pass the parcel, where each generation unwraps a layer, revealing the traits contained within. Now, if we were to hop into our time machine and travel back a few centuries, we would find ourselves in a world where the concept of genetics was as alien as smartphones. People noticed similarities between parents and children, of course, but the mechanism behind this was a mystery. That is, until the mid-19th century when one man began to unlock the secrets of inheritance. Enter Gregor Mendel, an Augustinian monk with a curious mind and a garden full of pea plants. Mendel, while not the first to ponder the secrets of heredity, was the first to approach it scientifically. He was a pioneer, a trailblazer, who ventured into uncharted territory, equipped with nothing but a keen observational skill and a desire to understand the mysteries of life. Mendel's experiments with his pea plants laid the foundation for the field of genetics. He discovered that traits were not blended, as was the common belief of the time, but were instead passed down in distinct units, which we now call genes. This was a revolutionary idea, one that would change the way we understand not just inheritance, but life itself. Today, we know that our genes are like the instruction manual for building and maintaining our bodies. They determine everything from the color of our eyes to our risk of certain diseases. They're the reason why we resemble our parents, why some of us can roll our tongues while others can't, and why each and every one of us is unique. Unraveling these mysteries was a man named Gregor Mendel, the father of genetics. Who was this man, Gregor Mendel, who dared to question nature's ways? Born in the early 19th century, Mendel was far more than just an ordinary monk. In the quiet confines of the St. Thomas Abbey in Brno, he dedicated his life to seeking the secrets of life itself. Although a man of faith, Mendel was equally a man of science. His curiosity was insatiable, and his mind, never at rest. While the monastery's lush gardens provided solace for some, for Mendel, they were a living laboratory. He was captivated by the diversity of the plants, their myriad shapes and colors, their patterns of growth, it was this fascination that led him to study the natural sciences, a field that was still in its infancy. But Mendel's true passion lay in genetics. He was driven by a desire to understand how traits were passed from one generation to the next. This curiosity fueled his groundbreaking work in the field. His fascination with nature led him to conduct one of the most famous experiments in the history of biology. What were these experiments that Mendel conducted, which revolutionized our understanding of genetics? Well, let's dive right in. Gregor Mendel, the father of modern genetics, began his legendary experiments around the mid-19th century. His playground? A humble garden filled with pea plants. But why peas? The pea plant, or Peasum sativum, comes in several clearly distinguishable varieties, making it an ideal candidate for Mendel's study. Mendel observed seven characteristics in the pea plants, such as seed color, flower color, and pod shape, among others. Each characteristic had two possible forms, like yellow or green seeds, or purple or white flowers. Mendel meticulously tracked these traits over several generations of pea plants, being careful to control the pollination process to avoid any unwanted genetic interference. Mendel started his experiments by cross-pollinating pea plants that had contrasting traits, a plant with green peas was crossed with one bearing yellow peas, for instance. He discovered that the first generation of offspring, or what we now call the F1 generation, displayed only one of the parent traits, not a blend of the two as was commonly believed at the time. For example, all F1 plants bore yellow peas, not green, not a mix, just yellow. Next, Mendel allowed the F1 generation to self-pollinate. This time the results were intriguing. The green peas reappeared in the second generation, the F2 generation, but in a specific ratio. For every three yellow pea plants, there was one green pea plant. Through these experiments, Mendel was able to deduce that traits were inherited independently of each other, and they didn't blend as they were passed on. Instead, they were determined by units, or factors, we now know as genes. And more importantly, some factors were dominant, expressing themselves over others, 
like the yellow color in the peas, and others were recessive. These experiments laid the foundation for what we now know as Mendelian genetics. Mendel's work, though unappreciated in his time, would later become the cornerstone of genetic studies, guiding our understanding of how traits are passed down through generations. What did Mendel discover from these experiments that is still relevant to our understanding of genetics today? Well, sit tight as we delve into the three laws of inheritance that Mendel unearthed. The law of segregation, the law of independent assortment, and the law of dominance. Let's start with the law of segregation. This law states that during the formation of sex cells or gametes, the two alleles for each trait separate from each other. No favorites here. For instance, let's consider a pea plant with purple and white flower alleles. When it's time to form the gametes, these alleles will segregate so that each gamete carries only one trait. It's like each allele gets its own ticket to the next generation. Moving on, we have the law of independent assortment. This law suggests that different traits are passed on independently of one another. In other words, the inheritance of an allele for one trait does not affect the inheritance of an allele for another trait. So, the pea plant's flower color won't influence whether the peas are round or wrinkled. It's as if each trait has its own destiny, unaffected by the other traits it travels with. Lastly, we have the law of dominance. This law states that some alleles are dominant, while others are recessive. When an organism has both a dominant and a recessive allele, the dominant one gets to call the shots. Going back to our pea plant, if it has both purple, dominant, and white recessive flower alleles, it will bloom with purple flowers. The dominant allele, in this case purple, masks the effects of the recessive one, white, in the phenotype. These laws discovered by Mendel form the bedrock of genetics. They guide us in predicting how traits are passed from parents to offspring, allowing us to understand the beautiful and complex tapestry of life. So the next time you marvel at the diversity of life around you, remember that it's all thanks to the laws of inheritance. These laws, discovered by Mendel, form the bedrock of genetics. Why does Mendelian genetics matter? What impact does it have on our lives today? These are questions that you might have pondered. Well, let's dive right in. Mendelian genetics, the cornerstone of modern genetics, has profoundly influenced various fields, making it more than just a chapter in a biology textbook. One prominent field is medicine. How so, you ask? While many human diseases, such as cystic fibrosis and sickle cell anemia, are inherited in patterns that reflect Mendel's laws. By understanding these patterns, medical professionals can predict the likelihood of an individual inheriting a particular disease, enabling preventative measures or early treatment. Now let's turn our attention to agriculture. Mendelian genetics has revolutionized this field too. Farmers and scientists use Mendelian principles to breed plants and animals with desirable traits. Think about the sweet, juicy apples you enjoy or the high-yielding wheat varieties that feed millions. These are not products of chance, but of careful genetic selection based on Mendel's laws. And there's more. Mendelian genetics also finds application in forensic science. Ever wondered how a single strand of hair can identify a criminal? It's all thanks to the principles of inheritance that Mendel unveiled. By analyzing genetic markers, forensic scientists can establish a person's identity or familial relationships with remarkable accuracy. But it's not just these fields. Mendelian genetics has far-reaching implications in areas like conservation biology, where it aids in maintaining genetic diversity, and in anthropology, where it helps trace human evolution. It's clear that Mendelian genetics is not confined to the realm of peas and petri dishes. Its principles reverberate through every facet of our lives, from the food we eat to the medicines we take, from the mysteries we solve to the futures we predict. From understanding diseases to improving crop yields, Mendel's work continues to shape our world. And that, dear listener, is why Mendelian genetics truly matters. So what have we learned about Mendelian genetics today? We've delved deep into the world of pea plants, where Gregor Mendel, the father of genetics, conducted his groundbreaking experiments. We discovered how he meticulously crossbred these plants, tirelessly noting the patterns of inheritance. This led him to his revolutionary discoveries, the laws of inheritance. 
The first law, the law of segregation, explains how each parent contributes one allele for every trait to their offspring. The second law, the law of independent assortment, describes how different traits are passed on independently of each other. We also explored the profound impact of Mendel's work. His laws have shaped the fields of genetics, agriculture, medicine, and beyond. They've helped us understand genetic disorders, improve crop yield, and even pave the way for gene editing technologies. In the vast world of genetics, Mendel's work remains a beacon, guiding our understanding of how life evolves and adapts.